So hey what's going on everyone, in today's video I've got a bunch of ideas for creating different AI applications but I'm particularly interested in apps like Stable Diffusion and Luna AI. What really catches my attention are apps that can transform text into images. So in this video we're going to build an amazing AI app that can just do that. How cool is that right? And wait, this app is going to be completely free. We don't need to pay to generate images. And that's the most interesting part here. Because we are going to use a package called Fusion Brain, which lets us to generate images completely for free. So that's the catchy part here. But before we dive in, I want to give a huge shout out to all the amazing supporters of Epic Programmer who are subscribed to my blog. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. You know, the more subscribers we have, the better our videos can become. So thank you all for your support. Now, let me tell you that this video is made possible by our sponsor Zigoblog. Apps like Google Meet, Zoom and other cloud video platforms are fantastic. But you know what, there is something truly exhilarating about building our very own platform. And that's where Zigoblog comes into action. Zigoblog is a global communication service provider that offers developer-friendly and powerful SDKs and APIs. With these tools, we can integrate and create features like video calls, chats, video conferences, live streaming and more on our apps. What's great about Zigo Cloud is that they also provide UI kits which are predefined user interface components. We can easily utilize these UI kits to build apps for live streaming, video calls and voice calls with minimal coding. Not only does this save time but it also eliminates the need to hire expensive technical developers to build the app for us. Zigo Cloud offers a wide range of use cases including dynamic video layouts, in-room messages, face beautification and call invitation. Speaking of call invitation, it reminds me of other remarkable features such as one-to-one -one calls, group calls, video conferences, live streaming, live audio room and in-app chat. The list of features available on Giga Cloud is extensive and I can't help but be impressed by everything they offer. To get started with Giga Cloud, simply head over to their website and click on the sign up option. You'll be asked to provide necessary information such as your email and the password you wish to create. Once that's done, you'll be redirected to the console where you can explore all the available options and begin integrating Zigo Cloud into your amazing app. Oh, and did I mention the incredible feature? Zigo Cloud offers 10,000 free minutes every month. This generous offering makes Zigo Cloud an outstanding service provider. So it's definitely worth checking them out. Feel free to visit their website and see all the amazing features they have to offer. So first and foremost, let's start by creating our Flutter app. And then we'll install all the dependencies and load our assets files in the pubspec.yaml file. And then we'll start creating some utilities for our Flutter app. We'll go ahead and create a file called app directory dot dot in the utils folder. Inside this file, we're going to build a class called path shared preferences that will help us to store and retrieve specific path using the shared preferences package. This package is handy because it allows us to save all amounts of data on the device that persists even when the app is closed. To store a path, we'll define a method called setPath that takes a path parameter. Within this method, we'll use a sharePreferences.getInstance function to get an instance of the sharePreferences object. With this object, we can set the value of path by using the setString method. We'll pass the path value along with a unique key called keyPath to identify and store it. To retrieve a path, we'll define another method called getPath that returns a future string. Similar to setPath method, we'll obtain an instance of the sharePreferences object using sharePreferences.getInstance. Then, we'll retrieve the stored path by calling the getString method and passing the key path as an identifier. The method will return the retrieved path value as a nullable string wrapped in a future, which allows us to work with it asynchronously. Then, we'll go ahead and create a new file called app language dot dot. In this file, we'll define a class called language chat preferences, which helps us to store and retrieve the selected language for our application using the chat preferences package. This package allows us to persistently store small amounts of data on the device. The class contains a constant variable called app language code, which represents the key for storing the selected language code in chat preferences. There is a private method called local, which takes a language code as a parameter and returns corresponding local object. It uses a switch statement to match the language code with different cases. For known language code, it returns the corresponding local object, such as local English language, US for the English language, and local Arabic language DZ for the Arabic language. If the language code is not recognized, it defaults to the English language. The set local method is a static method that allows us to set the selected language. It takes the language code as a parameter and returns a future local. Inside this method, we obtain an instance of shared preferences object using a shared preferences .get instance. Then we set the selected language code using the setString method of our shared preferences, along with the app language code key. 
Finally, we return a corresponding local object by calling the local method with the language code. The get local method is an another string method that retrieves a selected language. It returns future local. Similarly, we obtain an instance of shared preferences and retain the stored language code using the get string method. If no language code is stored, we default to the English language. Finally, we return the corresponding local object using the local method. Additionally, there is a helper function called translation which takes the build context as a parameter. It returns an instance of app localization class which is responsible for providing localized translation based on the selected language. Next, we'll go ahead and create a new file called app theme mode dot dot. Here, we'll go ahead and define a class called theme shared preferences which helps us to store and retrieve the selected theme and mode for our application using the shared preferences package. This package allows us to persistently store small amounts of data on the device. The class contains constant variables, key theme and key mode, which represents the key for storing the theme and mode in shared preferences. There are two sets of methods, one for handling theme and another for handling the mode. For the theme, we have set theme name and get theme name methods. The set theme name method takes a theme parameter representing the selected theme and stores it in shared preferences. Inside the method, we obtain an instance of shared preferences object using shared preferences .get instance. Then we use the set string method of shared preferences to store the theme value along with the key theme key. The get theme method retrieves the stored theme from shared preferences. It also obtains the shared preferences object and uses the get string method to retrieve the stored value using the key theme key. The method returns the retrieved theme value as a string wrapped in a fusion. Similarly, for the mode, we have set mode name method and get mode name method. The set mode name method takes a mode parameter representing the selected mode and stored it in shared preferences. Inside this method, we obtain an instance of the shared preferences object. Then we use a set string method to store the mode value after converting it to the lowercase using the two lowercase method. This ensures consistent storage of the mode regardless of the provided case. The get mode name method retrieves a stored mode from shared preferences. It obtains the shared preferences object, retrieves the stored value using the key mode key and returns it as a string wrapped in a future. These methods allow us to easily store and retrieve the selected themes and more for our application using the shared preferences. By persisting these values, we can maintain the user's preferred theme and mode across app sessions, providing a consistent and personalized user experience. Then we'll go ahead and add languages first. So we can do that by creating a new folder called L10N. That means adapting content to its country of destination. It involves not only translation, but also adapting this content to a specific target as well as a full validation of localized content. So we'll go ahead and add two different languages, which is going to be English and Arabic. And this is solely for demonstration purposes. So you can go ahead and create different languages if you need. So now let's get back to our utils folder. And here we can create a new file called language dot dot. Here we are going to define a class called language that represents language entity. It has four properties, ID, flag, name, and language code. These properties define the unique identifier, flag emoji, name and language code of a language respectively. The class has a constructor called language that takes the ID, flag, name and language code as parameters and assigns them to the corresponding properties of the class. There is also a static method called language list that returns a list of language objects. Inside the method, we create and initialize two language objects using the constructor. The first object represents English with an ID of 1, a flag emoji of US and a name of English and a language code of EN. The second object represents Arabic with an ID of 2, a flag emoji of desert, a name of Arabic, and a language of EAR. These objects are added to the list. By calling the language list method, we can retrieve a list of predefined languages with their respective properties. This can be useful for creating languages selection features in our application, allowing users to choose their preferred language from a list of options available. Finally, let's create a new file called strings. Dot. Here we are going to define constants and a map that holds information related to app themes, modes, language codes and string used within the application. These values can be accessed and utilized throughout the application to provide consistent and localized user experience. Let's move forward and create the pages for our app. However, I'll skip explaining the design part because I'm not very good at explaining the visual designs. I've come up with a simple design in my mind and implemented it in this app. So the design is up to you. After designing the page, let's focus on implementing the controls. In this section, I'll declare several variables and a method called save image. The image qubit variable is of a type image qubit and is declared with the late keyword indicating that its value will be assigned later in this code. Similarly, the app directory qubit variable is also a type of app directory qubit and is declared with the late keyword. Directory variable represents a directory in the file system but doesn't have an initial value yet. 
I'll declare several variables and methods called save image, image qubit, app directory qubit, text editing controller, scaffold key, and style display text. Now let's talk about save image method. It's an asynchronous function that takes uint8 list parameter named canvas. This method is responsible for saving an image to the file system. Inside this method, we have a series conditional statements and file operations. First, it checks if the chosen path is not equal to path hint constant. If it's not, the method creates the necessary directories and generates a unique image file name based on current date and time. Then it writes the image data to the file and displays a success message using a snack bar. However, if the path is equal to path hint or if any exception occurs during the process, the method calls the choose path function. Alright, now we are done with the home page. Now let's get back to our main dot file. We'll begin by importing necessary packages and dependencies. Next, we'll go ahead and define the main function which serves as the entry point for the application. It ensures that the flutter is initialized using the widgets flutter binding dot ensure initialized. After that, it checks if the platform is Android using the platform dot is Android and waits for 1.2 seconds before removing the native splash screen using the flutter native splash dot remove. This provides a smooth transition from the native splash screen to the flutter app. Then we are going to initialize the sentry flutter SDK for error monitoring by calling sentry flutter dot init. It provides a DSN which is known as data source name that points to the sentry project responsible for collecting error data. Once initialized, the app runner function is passed to the sentry flutter dot init which runs the Flutter application by calling run app. The my app class is a stateless widget that represents the root of the application. It utilizes a multi-block provider to provide multiple instances of block qubits to its child widgets. The block providers are responsible for managing application state related to languages, theme, mode, and directory. The build method of my app constructs the application's UI using the block builder widget. It listens to the changes in the app theme, app mode, and app language states and rebuilds the UI accordingly. The UI is wrapped in a shortcut widget which defines keyboard shortcuts for activating specific intents. The material app widget is used to define the overall configuration of the Flutter app. It sets up the localization using the app localization delegates, defines supported localates, sets the initial route and defines routes for different pages. The debug show check mode banner is set to false to hide the debug banner on the screen. The theme mode is determined based on the selected app mode and the light and dark themes are set accordingly. Lastly. There is a custom class called custom scroll that extends material scroll behavior. It overrides the drag devices property to specify the pointer devices that can trigger scrolling behavior. Now, let's go ahead and run the app. And there you have it. I skipped few steps to make this video smoother and easier to follow, but you can find all the details in the accompanying blog post. So let's test it out with some text prompts. Wow, it looks absolutely amazing. You should give it a try too. You can find the build version of the app in the blog post. So download it and check for the results. That's pretty much it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.